Now this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com and today we're going to do a walk around and initial impression of a 2011 Lariat F250 Power Stroke diesel Ford truck. Probably the single most amazing thing to me is that this truck is running right now. I don't have to raise my voice any higher than just conversational. I don't even have to yell. My truck, old spot, that thing's so noisy you can't hardly hear the phone ring when you're driving down the road in it. People complain to me, I never pick up the phone. I said, well, the truck's so noisy I can't hear it ring. This truck is so quiet that you can carry on a conversation next to it, even in the morning when it's cold. Okay, the front end of the truck is a total redo. One of the things that I like the best is, is that when you open the hood on this truck, the grill doesn't go with it. If you've had a a 2008 to 2010 and that grill goes with it every time you go under there that thing will snag on you and, and catch you on the back of the head when you go in and out from underneath the hood of the truck so it's wonderful to have the grill actually attached to the front of the truck outside of the front clip of the truck the rest of the truck is very very similar to the previous models back to 2008 uh, there's a few little updates um, but one of the things that I've noticed about this truck just an initial walk around was that this is a 42,000 mile truck now um, and it has not been tuned, it has, not, has done stock truck and look how clean that exhaust is so the selective catalyst reduction seems to be doing its job in, in keeping the environment clean the rear of the truck pretty much remains unchanged uh, to the previous model one of the options that the Ford trucks have had back to 2008 is this step that pulls out of the tailgate um, it's a wonderful thing to have if you're going to go in and out of the truck especially in a 4x4 where they sit up a little bit it makes it a whole lot easier to go in and out of the back of the truck. Interior wise the truck is virtually the same as the previous models back to 2008. Uh, a little bit different material in the seats. On the actual dash cluster itself it's a little bit different. They have a electronic display here, heads up type display. Uh, other than that, I mean all the navigation stuff uh, and whatnot is pretty much the same. Console's a little different. You got enough room in the in the console for all kind of drinks there. When you get down to the nitty gritty and actually open the hood here and take a look under you know, it's the same uh, sort of thing like the 6.4 where they, they pretty much put 10 pounds of manure in a 5 pound bag under here. It's pretty hard to even see most of what's going on, but for the most part, it's, it's somewhat different. Uh, one of the main things that's different about the setup of this engine is the way they do the charge air cooler. The actual intercooler is a, uh, a water to air type uh, charge air cooler instead of the air to air type where they had the plumbing that would go down to an intercooler out front and then go around and come back like the 6.0 and the 6.4 uh, this one actually is liquid cool uh, and it makes a much more stable much more predictable type um, uh, charge air cooler temperature over on the passenger side of the engine compartment the uh, computer sits pretty much in the same place as a 6.4 and the uh, uh, the EGR system is nice and exposed so it's easier to maintain than it was with a 6.4 one of the overwhelming feelings that you get just looking underneath the hood of the truck is that it, yes it's complicated but it's organized. It's not the chaos like you see underneath the hood of a 6.4 where it's just jammed in there. Uh, it looks very well thought out. It has the simple ideas and simple execution that we've grown accustomed to with Ford Motor Company. When you get up underneath the truck and you take a look at it, it's uh, obvious that the, the suspension and frame and whatnot is pretty much the same as the stuff that goes back to 2008. Uh, the, the, the swing arm front suspension with the coil springs was a huge, huge improvement over the old uh, leaf spring stuff. Um, really, all, uh, they did the improvement back in 2005 in the 6 liter trucks, and, uh, but they beefed it up considerably in 2008. Outside of that, that's where the similarity ends. As we look at the bottom of the 6.7 engine, that pesky oil cooler that we had to replace is right here where it's easy to get to. I don't know, I'm a little skeptical about this plastic oil pan on the bottom of the motor. Uh, you know, if you find yourself out in the woods and, and bumping on a rock or something, I'd be a little scared of it breaking, but uh, I think for freeway use, it's probably going to be just fine. Yeah, good old-fashioned spin-on oil filter, just like American cars are supposed to have. And uh, this great big old six-speed transmission under here. And, and it's pretty obvious that this stuff is, is completely different and uh, Ford managed to package it in such a way that it, it looks relatively easy to work on. The big news for this truck is really in the exhaust system. You got three separate systems here. The first system up in front is a standard catalyst, like a catalytic converter, just like came in the 7.3 trucks, the 6 liter trucks, and then the 6.4s. Now the 6.4 implemented what was called the DPF. 
Now the DPF back here is uh, a diesel particulate filter which is actually designed, it, it takes that heavy wet soot uh, that, that is generated by the engine and captures it in this can and then it goes into regen mode just like a 6.4 and burns it out and turns it to ash. Now the big thing is what goes on in here in the middle. What goes on in the middle here is what's called selective catalyst reduction. It's a pretty unimpressive looking pipe right here, but what goes on in here is what the essence of modern uh, emissions technologies uh, and, and the clean air that comes out of the uh, tailpipe of these trucks. And this is where the diesel fluid, the actual urea, gets injected into this part of the exhaust system and converts the nitrogen oxides into less polluting molecules. Uh, this science that's used here has actually been around for a very long time in coal fire uh, power plants uh, to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, I have another lecture later that will go in depth of exactly how this works, but suffice it to say that it works. The only downside of this exhaust system is that it is going to need, require maintenance to, to keep up, and the parts in this exhaust system are extremely expensive. That's the only downside I see to it. As we get underneath the front bumper of the truck up by the front differential, the front suspension again is standard fare. It's the same stuff that we've been looking at since 2008. But the one thing that sticks out in my mind here as I look underneath the front of the truck is the neatness of the packaging. Ford went to great lengths to, to simplify and make this truck a whole lot less complicated. One of the other things I like about these modern trucks that, you know, 2008 and up, if you get it with the package, is this little uh, backing up camera that comes stock on the truck. And I like this here. Now if you've ever tried to hook a ball to a trailer by yourself and uh, you don't have that that camera that shines back off the bumper, this is a big help, man. The other thing is, it's a little bit, takes a little bit of getting used to, is that when you go to put a turn signal on, it doesn't stay up there. You know, I'm used to when it stays clicked like this. Well, this one doesn't do that. It clicks on and it puts it on and then it'll turn itself off. Uh, but it's not mechanical in the steering column. It's a beautiful, smooth vehicle. Uh, just absolutely, you put your foot in it and she takes off with plenty of power. The only thing I don't like, I feel a, a disconnect in between the pedal and the actual performance of the vehicle. Uh, and this is caused by the computer management of the truck. The computer management of this vehicle is extremely sophisticated. This engine's capable of huge power, but of course Ford tunes it down a little bit because they don't want you breaking the thing all the time, having to have a bunch of warranty claims for, for transmissions or this sort of thing. So it, it, there is a little disconnect. You press the pedal and, and it sometimes feels like it takes a, a, a second or two uh, uh, to be able to accelerate and go like you expect it. The other thing that's very interesting about this truck is that there's no oil change intervals. In other words, there is no schedule. You don't do it every 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 necessarily. The computer in this truck is so sophisticated that it will actually tell you with a light on the dash, an indicator uh, on your, your heads up display here, that will tell you when to change your oil. So if you drive the truck lightly, and uh, there's not a lot of carbon being put into the oil from, from hard use, then you have longer oil change intervals. If you really run the thing, you got a big trailer, you're constantly going up and down the hills like they have here in North Georgia and, and here in the uh, Appalachian area or, or Colorado or some such place, if you're really pushing a truck all the time, well then uh, you're going to change it more often. But the computer in the truck is designed to let you know that. Outside of those details, this is a fantastic truck. Uh, it, it's fast, it's powerful, it glides down the road. Um, this one's 42,000 miles on it. The tires got a little bit of wear on them. Um, you put a good set of new tires on this truck and you put nitrogen in them. Uh, that's a little trick that I've seen used several times, especially in the, the big diameter wheels. This thing's going to glide like a Cadillac. You know, the only other downfall of this truck is it's expensive. I mean, it's this truck here, the list on this truck's, uh, I think the list price was between fifty-eight dollars and $60,000, depending on where you bought it. And so, you know what? It ought to be a nice truck. It ought to do everything just right. It ought to glide smooth and ride nice and start and be quiet. But you get what you pay for. I mean, this modern technology is good stuff uh, because it, it works so well. Um, this is a very well-designed, very tight vehicle. As far as any warranty stuff, only time will tell. Um, this one's been back one time for a fuel pressure switch, which was a very simple in and out type thing, uh, minor problem. And my feeling is if you're going to keep one of these trucks and go the distance in it, go a couple hundred thousand miles in it, 
I would purchase the extended warranty that goes past the 100,000 miles uh, simply because at some point that exhaust system is going to need some attention and, and if, make sure that your warranty covers that exhaust system because uh, the parts that are in that exhaust system are extremely expensive. You know, you, you don't want a check engine light to come on your dash and, and, uh, and, and, and take it in and have some crazy five six thousand dollar bill for, for a few cans in your, in your exhaust. So it may be worth it to, to go ahead and just buy the extended warranty if you're going to keep this vehicle. Oh no, it's a fantastic vehicle. I, I, if, you, if you have the money, you have a need for it uh, uh, as far as towing and whatnot. I don't think there's anything better out there um, uh, for, on the market. Uh, it, the, the ride and the quality and the comfort is just, it's just a fantastic vehicle. Uh, I, I really don't have a whole lot of bad to say about it and all the things I have said are being picky anyway. So maybe one day if I keep saying good things about Ford Motor Company, it'll just come and give me one and let me ride around in it. Come on guys. You need to send me a truck, man. I want a King Ranch, though. Well, actually, I'll pretty much take anything you give me. Why not? I've been putting love on Ford. Everybody's been out there saying, oh, man, these Ford trucks are junk. And I'm the nice guy. I'm the guy telling everybody it's a good truck because it is a good truck. So you, need to, they, you know, I need to feel some love from Dearborn, man. I need Dearborn to show me some love because I've been giving all kinds of love. You know, 5.8 million hits on my website, and all I do is give love to Ford. I need some love, man. 5.8 million hits. They don't even get 5.8 million hits on their own site. Come on, guys. I like one just like this. White with tan leather, a little sunroof action. Come on, man. And a gas, well, I, I'll, I'll buy the gas. You don't have to give me a gas card. But if you give me a gas card, I'll ride around and tell everybody how good a truck it is.